Hello everybody, this is Danny from Deep South Homestead, back on Forest Time this morning. Oh, we've got another cloudy day. Seems like we have a lot of those here lately. It's cool, nice. Temperature's really good. So we're able to sit out here on the porch today, guys. Uh, there's been a lot of noise going on around me, so I'm hoping I get this video in before it all starts back. Been a lot of lawnmowers running, and dogs are barking, guns are shooting, and it's that time of the year where everybody's out doing their thing. So guys, let's get this video rolling and let's uh let's see if we can't make this happen. So I want to talk about the new food for 2020 and beyond. Do you realize that there's going to be a new food for 2020 and beyond? It's already in the makings now. We have uh we've talked about this before in limited amounts, but I think it's time to actually start talking about a little bit more of it now so that we maybe we can understand a little bit more about what might be going on in our food system. Now, we all know that we're ramping up in the very near future to begin having some food shortages and crises and maybe some possible rationing, which the rationing's already started. It's just being hid from us. Uh, a lot of people are noticing in a lot of stores now, you can only purchase so many of each item. They won't let you have, uh, won't let you have a bunch of any one thing. You're only allowed five of this or six of that or four of this. And, uh, and if you want more, you go and you maybe you can talk to the store manager, but he's not allowed legally to let you, according to company policies, to have any more than that. And technically I've learned if you, if you come in, and you buy and you walk out the door and go put it in your vehicle, you technically you can come back in and purchase again because it's not on the same thing. But there's also a movement in the very near future for your credit card to pick that up and on credit card purchases. So if you purchase something with a credit card and you go in, out and you put it in the vehicle and you come back in, well, they know you in the same store trying to purchase the same thing. The credit card will actually deny it. So... So you have to be careful. They're trying to get us in actually any way that they can. Uh, it's just, guys, we're headed into a time and period in history where it's going to be different now. Uh, the food for the future is not going to be food like we're, we're used to. The thing about it is, is it's already been implemented somewhat into our food system already. Uh, the, the UN is now uh, in a process of actually looking into or voting on um, trying to cut back quantities in food as far as nutritional things. They're trying to make food have more fillers in it than what it used to have. Now, food is already loaded with fillers. I mean, it's, you know, if you don't believe me, just go to a grocery store and pick up anything. I don't care what it is. Pick up anything that's processed in any kind of way. This got any kind of box, packaging, plastic, whatever, around it. Pick it up and read on it, and see what it says. It's got like 20 different things that's been added into it. They go into it. They literally process it to death, where it has absolutely no nutrition in it whatsoever. And then they turn right around, and then they add a lot of stuff back to it as fillers that are synthetic things that go back in it. Our bodies are organic matters. They are not designed for synthetic things to be put in it, whether it's food, drugs, or anything. It's, it is only designed to have natural things put in it or organic things put into our body. And we have to realize that um, no matter what happens, uh, our bodies will not function properly. Now, one of the things we have to, I'm going to ask you is, from 2020 and beyond, if you don't raise your own food, now listen to what I'm fixing to say. If you don't raise your own food, will you be strong enough to survive whatever happens? And you go, well, sure. I'm a healthy person. That's not what I'm saying. Listen, listen, listen to what I'm saying. Pay attention to the food sources. 
they're cutting back. The new foods that are going to be coming out in the future are being cut back on proteins, carbs, and sugars. Now, in order for your body to function, it must have all of these things in it to function properly. The thing that we have to pay attention to is that things need to be in the proper amounts. Everything needs to be done in proper amounts. Now, you can overdo it with anything. Sugar is one of the best things that your body can have, but it needs to be a natural form of sugar, not some sort of processed sugar. And then it's to be done in limitations. You can get your sugars through uh, eating potatoes and, and it, the starches and it turn to sugars. Your corn can be, your starches and your sweet corn can turn to sugars. I mean, sugar can come in the form of fruits, vegetables. All these things have sugars in them that the body requires because the brain must have sugar in order to function properly. Uh, the United States military knows this. They can go into an area and all they got to do is just cut the sugar out and it, it, it doesn't take long. People start going nuts. They've got to have sugar, you know. These are some of the tactics that's used in places. It's been used all throughout history. It's not new. Guys, the new food coming out is being limited in proteins, carbs, and sugars. And what they're doing is that they are actually looking for forms of cellulose to fill all these foods with. They are um, they're using them as fillers. Now, I don't know what they're going to do if they run out of cellulose. I mean, I don't know. Uh, they'll find something, I'm sure. They found that, so they'll find something else. But the whole movement is to try to get people weak. Try to get people where they can't really, they don't have good health, let's say. Uh, they, they have very little resistance about them because they're not big, strong, robust, healthy people. You know, they... They are, a lot of people will be big old fat people, but it's only because of the processed foods that's being put into their bodies. It's not because they've actually been eating healthy. A lot of it has to do with medications making people overweight and stuff like this, where the medicines tamper with the natural functions and natural systems inside the body. There's a lot of stuff out there, guys, that's, that's actually beginning to happen. And the... Uh, Will you be one of the ones that has to partake in the new food from 2020 and beyond? Now, you remember the last first time we talked about how that um, they're already raising litter bugs and grinding in them up and, and using them as a filler in foods and protein and foods and stuff like this, like these, uh, uh, the, I, I don't eat them and I, don't, I can't stand them, but these little uh, protein bars and stuff like that, they're already being added into it under names that you don't even recognize. Uh, you can already buy crickets that are for protein sources. You can buy chocolate-coated crickets. I mean, there's, there's all these kinds of things that they have out there for people claiming that they're actually healthy for you. And, I'm, and you know what? I'm not trying to say they're not healthy for you because birds eat them. You know, birds eat insects and stuff like this. And you know, something as big as a bear. A bear eats grubs and all this kind of stuff. And, and, and you know, evidently there's some pretty good protein in it. Um, I've heard of people eating these big old sawyers that comes out of rotten logs and stuff like that, and they claim that they are not bad. They claim that they actually have a nutty taste to them, and that they actually have a lot of protein in them. You know, I'm, it's not for me right now at this point in my life, okay? That's what I'm saying. It might be good for you. I don't know. I'm going to stick with what I know right now. But I'm telling you, they're beginning to put these things in food, and they're it's, because, it's going to get to the point where if you're a meat eater, a real meat eater, now not a lab meat eater, but a real meat eater, that you're going to be looked down on. And you'll only be able to purchase a certain amount of it. You won't be able to, like we talked about in the other four time, you won't be able to purchase a lot of it. So this is why these things are happening behind our backs. You don't see anybody talking about this stuff. People are actually not wanting to hear about it actually they don't even want to hear it so the the, the mainstream media don't talk about it these people who uh, are are in the un and all these places like that all this stuff is hidden 
they don't it doesn't ever make the mainstream media news or anything like that so people actually don't know what's going on they just go to the store and they buy this stuff and they look on the back of it and they see all these big old long words it's about that long they don't even know how to pronounce them or what they even mean and they go oh well it must be okay for me or they see added vitamin or added niacin or added modified food starch or you know all these things it's just added to it uh all these thiamine's been added niacin's been added all these things these vitamin c's been added and all this stuff guys it's only because it has no nutrition in it that's why it is so 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 important that we raise our own food The, I'm trying to remember the percentages. Um, I want to say that it's like 20%. I could be wrong. Don't quote me on this one, but I, I think I'm pretty close. 20% of the world's heirloom seeds this past year failed. And you go, well, it's just 20%. There's still 80% more that made it. Okay, let's stop and look at something. If this year we have a 20% drop in, in, in our seeds, and yet we're able to get our crops in, uh, lots of people got crops in, lots of farmers are, uh, lots of farmers right now are still able to harvest. Uh, corn is one of those big issues. You can harvest it in the spring if it makes it over the winter. It's still okay, as long as you can get it dried. But we... We have some reserves. It's not like this country don't have some reserves because we have some reserves. And then people go, well, it's no big issue. We lost 20% of our, food, our seed crop this year. Um, we'll dig into our reserves a little bit to overcome it this coming year. Well, the, the, this, is the, this is where I'm going with it. If we have a 20% loss this year, and let's say next year we have a 20 or maybe a 30% loss, if you combine those two years together, over a two-year period, we've had a 40 to 50% loss in seeds. And then if we had to dig into this year's food reserve and get 20% out of it to make it for next year, and next year we have a 20 or 30%, then we got to go into a food reserve that's already had 20 or 30% taken out of it and get 20 or 30% more took out of it. By, the, by 2023 or 2024, somewhere in that area, I look for us to have a total food collapse if this happens. That's why I'm telling you right now, <clears throat> right now, I believe we have somewhat of a reprieve. I believe we've had it in 2019 and 2018. I believe it's been a slight reprieve for us to have time to be able to gather up some commodities and some goods and some seeds because right now and i don't remember guys i've read so much and this ain't the only thing i read on i, I study like 25 different things and it's hard for me to keep them all without my paperwork in front of me to keep them all in order but monsanto Bayer, all these ones are, are all merging and all this stuff they already control, and I forget the percentage. That's why I'm trying in my mind to remember the percentage of seeds that they already control in the world and seed companies. Now, the thing about it is, is a seed company, you may look at it, you may go, well, it doesn't say that Monsanto is the mother, mother plant of this. Uh, it names off some other company. Well, what you have to look at is Monsanto sits up here. Monsanto has many fingers that go out, and they have uh, they have seed companies under them there, and those have fingers going out, and they have seed companies underneath them. And the little seed guys are selling to these big seed guys, where well, the big seed guys sell directly to Monsanto, who is actually their boss. So Monsanto, I'm wanting to say, covers like a quarter of all the seed, maybe more than that. Now I don't remember, but it, they 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 actually control a vast number of the seed companies that's out there now. And there's some talk going on that seed supplies in 2020 and 2021, uh, 2021 mainly, will be very, very limited. 
as far as what people can get. So we're back at the dog barking again, so I guess I'm not going to get through this video without that. But um, but this is the this is the thing, guys. Is take 2020. Buy every seed you can get your hands on that's an heirloom seed. Now the problem with the heirloom seed. Let me go here with that. Get you some hybrids too. Okay. Go ahead and buy you some hybrids because they're not, I mean, a hybrid is just a, it's just a seed. It is, it is not genetically modified. It's been altered to be disease resistant more for, and, and than some heirloom seeds are. You can't save the hybrid seed, but if you buy enough hybrid seeds, then you can plant and you can have that, even though you can't save the seed, if you have enough of them bought up. What's going to be happening here is with the chemtrailing that's going on in the upper atmosphere, there's so much aluminum being put into the Earth's ground right now that our plants are not being allowed to pull up phosphorus from the soil uh, to be able to create good cell structure in the plants because the aluminum is blocking that. And Monsanto now has come out with aluminum resistant seeds for growers. Uh, it, it's all a big plan, guys. And I'm not going to sit here and go into all the details about it because it's not important at the moment. What's important at the moment is 2020, let it be the year that you as an individual buy all the seed you can buy, whether they're hybrid, whether they're heirloom. And the problem with heirlooms is this. There's a movement, and I can't go into details about all this, but there is a movement out there that is set up to prevent heirloom seeds from producing like they need to produce. Now there's a difference between heirloom, open pollinated, um, uh, hybrid. I'm telling people, get you some open pollinated varieties, get you some hybrid varieties, and get you some heirloom varieties. Have them all stored up, guys. I mean, get whatever you think you can get and get it because you're going to need it in the future. I'm sitting here right now. I've got a whole garden in front of me at the cabin that is a mixture of greens about this tall. They're about 10 inches tall. And, I mean, we're not picking them all and eating them. We have some that we pick and we have some that we eat out of our pots and containers here. This is a cover crop. But the thing about it is, is that cover crop, if I get hungry, one and I occasionally will go out there and pick a few leaves off and put them in a pot and cook them and just have one little pot of greens. Or we could go out there and we could, uh, and we usually do this towards the springtime because after they've had some good frosts on them and sweeten them up really good and some of them have roots on them and stuff like that, we'll go out and we'll take a wheelbarrow and go through there and we'll just, we'll harvest a whole bunch of them and we'll bring them to the house and cut the roots up and cut the leaves off of them and we'll just go ahead and can a bunch of them. I mean, those are things that we do. And I'm urging you to grow I don't care if you're in an apartment. I don't care if you're in a, in a, in a HOA, in a, in a subdivision. Um, find you some kind of, even if you have to, some kind of nice looking containers that, that you won't get in trouble about. It look like flower planters or something like that. And, and, and guys, grow you some cabbages, grow you some lettuce, grow you some, you know, something. Tomatoes, peppers, um, squashes, whatever. Grow them in them things in your backyard or whatever and try to keep you some food. Get you some, uh, Wanda uses this thing, the green stalk. Uh, this thing is a vertical planter. That thing produced last year. I don't know how much food we got out of that thing and how long we ate out of it. It seemed like forever. You know, we have a mini greenhouse. Right now, that mini greenhouse is loaded with different kinds of food. Uh, and, it's, and it's just doing good. We have our bigger greenhouse. Um, it's doing fine. We got some of our citrus trees in there. We got tomato plants. We're eating fresh tomatoes. Uh, I can't stress enough to prepare for these things because the food for the future will not carry enough protein, carbs, and sugars to keep you where if you have to get out and work and produce for yourself, it will not keep you with enough energy to be able to do much of anything for long periods of time.
It's, it's, it's designed to just be simply a filler. Because the deal is, they're saying there's too many people on the face of the earth. The population is too great for the amount of food that we have. So we're having to cut back on the amount of actual food that's in something. And we've got to have more filler for the people to be full. And maybe they won't eat as much. And they're not interested in the nutritional value of your food whatsoever. Because the more of you that pass off the scene, the, uh, the better it will be for them because they won't have to feed that many mouths. There's, there's so many agendas underway about depopulation. Uh, I really look in the very near future for some war or skirmish to pop up somewhere, and that will be all we'll need to be able to implement food rationing like it was during the World Wars. And I, I'm afraid, guys, at this point in, in our history in the United States, that we are not ready for that. I don't think that people, I don't think people could stand it, to be honest with you. I think there would be rioting in the streets. I think there would be uh, grocery stores, anything that had any kind of food. I don't care if it wasn't nothing but a Twinkie. I, I, I feel like they would, that, that they would just go into stores and just rob them and steal and Even if they meant killing you, they would kill you for your food. You know, I think we're gonna be coming to that point. And if this gun movement in Virginia continues, then it's quite possible that a people that have no way of protecting themselves are a lot more easy to control and do something with. Now, I'm getting information in that it's not just con uh, Virginia that's facing this issue, that Kentucky now has a person who's trying to legislate that same issue in Kentucky. I've been told that... Um, uh, Rhode Island or New Jersey, maybe it's New Jersey, it's either Rhode Island or New Jersey, it's actually falling in pursuit of Virginia. Guys, I knew once this started that if they could ever get a foothold, that the liberals from state to state would begin to push these issues, that it would cause so much of an uprising in this country that literally uh, it could cause a civil unrest and civil war. And that would implement and mean that the government would have to step in and would have to start taking control of situations. They would use the National Guard and different things. And guys, that's when the food, listen to what I'm telling you, that is when the food is going to become a big issue. The attention right now is being taken off of food because too many people are realizing that we're having food problems in this country, not just this country, but in the whole world. We have a global food issue going on. What better way to take your mind off of the food issues in this country than to start talking about taking guns or controlling guns or some kind of civil unrest going on so that people aren't focused on the food issue and they can do what they need with the food issue and get it because you're not thinking about it. You're thinking about something that's that you think is more important to you, which is guns, which is our Second Amendment right. Yes, it is a big issue. And I'm not trying to play it down in no way or form. It is important. It's very important. And the thing about it is, is they're trying to create these problems to get us off kelter and get us focused in another direction so that they can go behind our backs and do something to the food system. Guys, it's... It's here. It's going to begin this year. 2020 is going to be the year, I believe, that changes all things. I don't think that we're going to actually see the implement or the severity, should I say, of what is actually going to happen until about 2023. I think between 2020 and 2023 is going to be a period of adjustment. I'm going to call that an adjustment period. I believe that's going to be when everything is actually uh, placed into order. And by 2023, we will be to a point where whatever's going to be is going to be. And I'm, just, I'm telling you, go ahead now, make your preparations. 
get your grow bags, get your seeds, get you some type of natural fertilizer, uh, figure out a way to make compost, create you a compost bin, do something to start having it where you as an individual can begin to get ready for the new food that's coming in 2020. So guys, um, I've been long enough already. I don't like to take these videos too awful long because it takes up a lot of your data and a lot of your time. But I do want to get the information out to you that I come across and I want you to understand I'm not fear mongering. I'm simply doing the best I can to keep this worded in a way that won't have my channel pulled and will get the information out to you and you'll be able to better prepare for your families. So thank you guys from Deep South Homestead.